Hey everyone, welcome back to another video on the Wreath Network on TryHackMe. Today we're going to be taking a look at Task 36, Personal PC, Exploit POC. Okay, so we know what is likely to happen when we access the page. It will, access, or will probably ask us for creds. We will be able to upload image files if we can successfully authenticate. Um, there are two kinds or two filters in play to stop us from uploading other kinds of files. And well, both of those filters can be bypassed. Perfect. Let's go ahead and access the page. First, let's go ahead and head to the forward slash resources directory. Uh, so if we go back to the website, there we go. We can see that it's asking for the uh, username and password combination. So uh, as expected, we are met with a request for authentication. We can assume that the username here is probably either Thomas or T. Wreath both of which we've already seen. We also already have one of Thomas's passwords, stolen from the Git server using Mimikatz. Let's see if we can log in using uh, these usernames with that password. So let's first try Thomas, and then I think it was I love... <laughs> Let me go ahead and check, actually. Uh, let's see, that was on stabilization and post-exploitation. Let's check what his password was. Uh, da -da -da. Here, I'm going to pause this for just a moment and grab the password. Okay, I was looking at it. It's I love Ruby. So let's try that. So Thomas did not work. Let's try T wreath and then I heart Ruby. Uh, let's give it a moment. I must have typoed that. So let's see. So T wreath and then I uh, heart Ruby. Okay, let's give it a moment. I think I'm typoing. Okay, I was being silly. It is lowercase Thomas, and then uh, that'll let you in. So we can mark that as complete, and sure enough, we have a wonderful cat upload page here. That is delightful, to say the least. Uh, so success. Let's go ahead. Let me jump back down on my other tab so that I can actually read what we're doing. How cute. A page uh, to allow Thomas to upload pictures of his beloved cat, Ruby, and the password makes much more sense. Try uploading a legitimate image and see if you can access it. Uh, well, let's go ahead. Uh, we can go to this wonderful website. Uh, we can grab my icon. Uh, actually, let's grab the Try Hack Me logo. That's easy. Save image as, and then downloads. Uh, we'll just name that THM PNG. I believe PNGs were allowed. We're gonna try. So we'll go ahead and upload that. That was in our downloads directory. Let's see if that works. Okay, so we can see that that uploads correctly. We can mark that as completed. All right, we already know how to bypass the first filter, which is simply changing the extension to .jpeg.php. Uh, that should just be enough. Again, this is a little bit squished over because I'm zoomed in for you guys' sake uh, with viewing this on the recording. Uh, this should look normal on your screens, but I'll read through everything anyways. The second filter is slightly harder, but doable. As the get image size function is checking for attributes that only an image will have, we will need to give it what it wants, an image. In other words, we need to upload a genuine image file which contains a PHP web shell somewhere. If this file has a .php file extension, then it will be executed by the website as a PHP file, meaning all we need to do is force a web shell into the file and we're golden. The easiest place to stick the shell is in the EXIF data for the image, specifically in the comment field to keep it nice and out of the way. And well, we can just abuse what we already have. Um, in this specific case, I, let's see, I might need to grab a JPEG, but we'll try it with the PNG. Actually, I will be right back. I'm gonna go grab a JPEG to make this consistent. All right, we're back. I downloaded this wonderful picture of a leaf. <laughs> and I definitely didn't just search for JPEG images on Google. Why would I ever do that? Uh, <laughs> that would be silly. Uh, so we can use, um, so let's take a regular image. Uh, so in this case, we'll download a JPEG of our choice off the internet, uh, keeping it safe for work and rename it to test-username.jpeg.php, substituting in your own try hack me username. So let's go ahead. Uh, we can go ahead and move to this in the terminal. <clears throat> um, so we don't need this directory anymore. Let's see, home, Cali, downloads. 
So we have the thm.jpg and then we have the leaf.jpg. So we can move leaf.jpg to uh, test-dark.jpg.php. There we go. <clears throat> and then let's see. So specifically, we want to put that in the comment field. Uh, let's see if we can just pull that up through the file browser and we should be able to just edit it there. I would imagine. So let's go in here. Actually, hold on. We need to rename this first because I can't edit the comment field on a PHP file. That's not very helpful. Properties. Um, Let me go ahead. I'll be right back. I will figure out how to edit the comments on this. Okay, we're back. I was getting ahead of myself. So we can go ahead. We'll run that again just to make sure that uh, we are renaming it correctly. Uh, let's see, ls, um, move test-dark.jpg uh, to test-dark.php. Uh, and if we use exif tool, which I don't think I have installed. I'll install that quick. Exif tool. Yeah, there we go. So fresh install, you will have to install this. <clears throat> but we can take a look at the data off of that file. Uh, so if we go back, we can do exif tool test and there we go so we can see that it still has this data um looks like i don't know if i have a comment field but we'll see if we can just add it anyways i'm uh, looking at the example it doesn't look like we have a comment field here so that should be okay and there we go even mirror gives you the instructions on how to install that uh, here we can see all the EXIF data for the image. EXIF tool also allows us to edit this information, which makes it a great choice for the exploit we're going to carry out. Before we actually start inserting payloads into the image, however, there is one more thing to take into account. There is antivirus software running on the target. We don't know which AV Thomas uses, but we know there will be, uh, that there will be protections enabled on this target. We don't know how strict the antivirus software he uses. For all we know, it will pick up any kind of PHP default web shell that we upload, alerting him to how close we are to compromising his host. And that's just no fun. For this reason, we will not be uploading a live payload in this task. Instead, we will create a proof of concept here, then upload a live payload when we have completed the PHP obfuscation task in the AV evasion section of the network. Bearing this in mind, let's create our proof of concept. So we'll be using the following PHP payload for this, and we can see our test payload right there. This is completely harmless, and ergo should not be picked up by the AV. It does, however, give us confirmation that this is likely to work. However, and the stage, it stages the way for the actual web shell upload. To add this image to our, uh, or to add this to our image, we once again use exif tool, and we can go ahead and use this command. And I'm just going to copy it. It's a little bit off screen, and let's see. So I need to go and edit the bit at the end to have it say dark. And there we go. So we can see that we've successfully updated it. Now, if we go through and use exif tool on that again, we can see that we have a wonderful comment field here with our test payload. Now try uploading the file and accessing it in your browser. So let's go ahead and go back here. It is still in this directory so we'll need to go and select all files here because otherwise it just won't show up and then we can go ahead and select the test file that we've created let's go ahead and upload that and we can see that it is uploaded successfully so the html let's see i'm going to scroll down over here so i can read it note the html form is configured to only allow image uploads through the gui so don't be alarmed if you don't see your script in the working directory just change to all supported types at the bottom right of the window to all files uh, again, you can just see that over here. That's what I had to do to be able to see it. We now have the ability to execute arbitrary PHP code on the system. So we can go ahead and mark that as completed. And that is going to do it for this video. I will see you guys next time when we cover task 37, the start of the AV evasion section. Until then, happy hacking.